I'm very grateful for the coffee breakers who literally pestered me to start coffee break in Arabic. So I'm really pleased because it's people you know, that I don't know, they've been following Coffee Break and they said, please say what you say, um, you know, in Arabic. So we can follow. It will not be the same subject because they speak English. So we'll do Monday, Wednesday in English and then Friday in Arabic. And I've started posting already today in Arabic. So I hope um, you'll see that, guys. So I thank you for your suggestions and for your encouragement. Today, I want to talk about what is the real you, what is our authentic identity, and how do we belong in a place that we don't belong to. And what made me think of all of that is Nakba Day or Nakba Week, which I've been posting about and I've been wearing my kufiya. And this year, it hit me a lot more than any other year. And I've been thinking, why, why, why is that? <laughs> And I think what is different this year, hey, just gentle, thank you for, for coming to coffee break. And I think what has been different this year is that having lost my mother, my husband, having lost my father previously and my brother, I found myself kind of like all alone. What is my life about? Where do I belong? I'm here, is this home? Is England home? Um, where do you belong? So it hit me harder as a Palestinian. And it just reminded me of how my sister, my nieces, my sister-in-law all over the place, in Canada, in Serbia, in London. And it just reminded me of the diaspora again. It reminded me of a theme that has been running throughout my life, which is really, I've been a Bedouin moving, and my parents moving from one country into the other, absorbing different cultures. And in the end, what is my identity? And the whole, Unbox thing is about, I think, unboxing labels, unboxing boundaries in order to get to that authentic or real um, identity. This, for example, is my husband's actually, believe it or not, he owned one even before I met him. And I'll come back to this later, why I mentioned this later. Because I really think if we put labels on our nationalities, on our religions, then we're going to separate each other from the other rather than build bridges and learn how to, to um, belong or how to find our tribe. Especially now in homestay, it became really evident, to me at least, that a lot of friendship have grew in a way that they haven't done so before because of the need for um, having deep, nurturing relationships, whether they're online or offline. And I found new friendships and I've rekindled a lot of old friendships that somehow were just a little bit ignored in the business of life. So this people, your tribe, where do you belong, what it is to have an identity and does it really help or does it separate and um, this is what this is about. So if you've lost, if you've suffered any loss of any sort, how do you start rebuilding your life, how do you feel that wherever your hat is, you can call home. So I have a little bit of experience about that and I want to share my tips with you later on. Um, another thing that has crossed my mind, whatever nationality, sex, identity that we are in this lifetime, because a lot of people ask me, are you proud to be Palestinian? Are you proud to belong from that family or the other? Are you proud to have done this or that? And my answer is really no because I don't see myself as that, it is who I am. So I've never been anything different. So why should I feel any different about it? It's, it's whatever God creation has made me and it's a given in this lifetime. But it doesn't mean that I'm better than you, I'm better than you know, another person because of my achievement or who I am. And I thought a lot about that. I think we need to belong, we can belong, but it doesn't have to be in a way that separates us from other people. Does that make sense? Give me thumbs up, guys. I wanna know what you think. Oh, House of Social, hello. Um, because for me, pride separates rather than unites. So we hear a lot, I don't know, you know, this country first, that nationality first. Um, I don't think so. Why should it be? Because by a mere twist of fate, you could have belonged to another country, to another nationality, to another religion, to another sex, 
but it is important. I'm not saying it is not important, but to me, as I have come to realize, I think what our lives, cultures, where we are born, the nationality, the gender, etc., is important in the sense that it gives context to our lives. It's like a movie, your li if your life is a movie, and all these givens are the context that sets you on your journey. It is not to just be proud of, I think there's a reason for it, nothing is by default in this universe, but I think the reason is more to understand your own personal journey. What do you need to overcome? And what do you need to nurture? And certainly for me, personally, that has been the challenge. How do I belong wherever I go? I'm born to Palestinian parents. I was born in, in Cairo, Egypt. I love Egypt. I feel I belong there, but I'm not really Egyptian. <laughs> I've always carried a Jordanian passport, but I have never really lived there for any length of time to make me feel that I belong there, you know? And then I moved in different places, different countries. I've lived in France, in the States, and then, of course, in England. And I stayed in England until I got my identity because it felt that I was all over the place and I couldn't really live my life knowing that I'm going to move again, lose again. How do I build a life? But I think the challenge, it's, it's really a funny thing because I ended up marrying an Englishman who brought me back to the Middle East because of his work and then he passed away. And then I'm thinking, oh my God, what do I do now? And I think the challenge has been to build a life, to belong wherever you are. And we've lived in Kuwait for a very long time. It was very difficult um, to meet people, can I say that? And I'm trying not to do the same here. Um, as I said earlier on, I was really going through a very difficult time. How do I rebuild my life? Someone posted that there's a women's forum, global women forum thing, apply for a ticket and come. I did, and very quickly I got my ticket. And then I, I met some people there and they said, oh, you're here as an entrepreneur. I said, no, <laughs> I'm here to explore, you know, local life, local women. What do people think? How they're planning for the future? I really wanted to immerse myself where I am. Because I think you can build these roots. You can pin your, if you've ever gone camping, you can pin your, your tent and feel stable, be it temporarily, wherever you are but reach out and build bridges. And in short, the theme of my life has been to overcome these differences, to build bridges and not feel that I've lost anything. And that has been my strategies, to build bridges, to share things that I am, did I miss anyone? Hi Allah, nice to see you. To build bridges with people so that wherever I am, wherever I go, I have precious memories, my life has changed, my life has improved, because of these people and I don't separate myself just because I come from a certain country or a certain background. So, how do you pin your life? Number one, I have four tips and I'll post them later. Oh, actually, why don't I show you this? I saw this um, quotation by uh, Sheikh Hashama earlier and it was really a lovely quotation. It says, wherever you stand, be the soul of the place. And basically, we can do quite a lot <laughs> to be the soul of the place, to be the center of our universe and welcome people into our universe. So, my first thing was to actually look people in the eye. It is so amazing how we walk down a familiar street even in our home country, but never make contact with other people. And I began to tell myself, you know, uh, because I feel we are all one. You know, I've put a post today, please read it. You know, you, me, and a banana are like 95% similar, genetically speaking. So look into people eye because they are you. And I think the first thing is to look at them. Two things, you acknowledge yourself, but you also acknowledge their existence. And something starts. And my second thing is, my second tip is, number two, don't be afraid to chit chat people you don't know in an environment that you don't know. Especially here, um, for me, it's almost like I'm exploring um, 
the Emirates, I'm exploring being in Dubai, and a friend of mine, when we arrived seven years ago, she said, Sahar, please talk to locals, get to know them. Um, you know, they're probably apprehensive as you are, and I've done that. Um, at every single occasion, I've really tried because I wanted to break that ice and I wanted to feel that I'm enriched by this experience wherever I am. My number three, how do you pin yourself? Nurture your interests, your hobbies, your passions. Because when you do, you are likely to meet other people in that foreign country or in that new environment. And you are likely to get along because they are also nurturing their interests, their hobbies, their passion. So it kind of became automatic for me that whenever I followed my hobbies, you know, whatever they are, you know, whether it's gardening or um, ceramics, I love pottery and ceramics, you really do tend to meet different people, different nationalities. And I wanted to build a tribe and I really made an effort to open up, meet different people through my interests, through this conference that I've attended, etc. Even on Instagram, I'm really making quite a lot of really nice, interesting friends to the point that they message me every day. Why don't you talk about this? Why don't you do that? And it, that is so rewarding for someone who went through a journey like mine. So number four is open up to meeting new people. They may not be who you think they are. Um, you don't need to be a typical you. You don't need to say, these are the people that I, you know, this is who I am, this is my identity, I will only mix or meet these people. I think that's very limiting. I'm really, really hot. It's really hot here, although the AC is on. Um, I have been exercising, but we'll talk about that next coffee break. And I think something wonderful happens when we open up, we build bridges, we get to see the other, we get to know ourselves through the other. Um, something magical happens. Uh, prejudice disappears. Pride dissolves. We have more capacity to nurture. We have more capacity to tolerate. And the last few months have really, really changed my life. And I hope that has been inspirational to you. I hope that you try and do whatever you can so that you can change your life in a positive way. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, if I can help you in any way, you are entitled to a complimentary discovery session. Take the online assessment, send it over, and then we'll meet for a chat for free for about 40 minutes. Um, I'd like to. This is my purpose, to build bridges, to help people. See you soon. Bye-bye.